there's a game being played online every day, only you might not realise it. If you are, chances are you're enjoying greater profits while working fewer hours than your competitors. And if you're not, you're wondering why your products aren't flying off their digital shelves. The game is simple. How long can you keep visitors engaged on your site? There are many ways to hold your visitors' attention, but there's one way that's more effective than any other, having compelling copy. Hi, I'm Julie from Sleeknote, the place where e-commerce marketers turn for more engagement and higher conversions. And in this video, I'll show you how your favorite e-commerce brands entice and engage readers to buy more using five proven copywriting principles, plus how you can do it too. Keep watching. Our first e-commerce copywriting principle is know who you're writing for. Think about it. In order to know how to write compelling copy, you need to know who you're writing for. Because once you know who you're serving, your company's personality will naturally render your copy. A company who understands their ideal buyer is BarkBox. Using phrases like BarkBox is like the joy of a million belly scratches and when your dog falls in rough with something from the box, BarkBox write in a way that resonates with their target market, canine enthusiasts. Puns, spoonerisms and other obscure words that only your ideal buyer understand is a powerful way to position your product and it's never been easier to research. Sites like Quora and Reddit not only offer insight into your target market goals and obstacles, they also reveal how they communicate them to others. Let's say you're an e-tailer specialising in men's grooming. One way to write copy that resonates with your ideal buyer would be to browse a subreddit related to your keyword. Ask Men, for example, is a popular subreddit where men ask other men questions. If you search for shaving, you might learn that a common obstacle for men when shaving is cutting themselves or getting irritated skin. So, if one of your products is a razor, you might use this newfound information to overcome the objection of will it irritate my skin in your product description. Dollar Shave Club incorporates humour in their product description to handle this very objection. Remember, when you're on the front line fighting your ideal buyer's objections and communicating in a way that's familiar, your copy will practically write itself. Next, you need to harness the power of brand storytelling. We all know we're hardwired to respond to stories, but narratives do more than entertain us. They move us emotionally, often to the point of action. They're why businesses weave stories into customer testimonials and how companies like Jack Daniels have created such a popular brand with story-driven ads. Compelling copy and product descriptions paints pictures for how the reader's life will be different if they take the desired action. Here's where you are now and here's where you'll be if you take action. Think Geek goes one step further combining humour, pop culture references and storytelling to create images in the prospect's mind. While combining storytelling with product descriptions is effective on its own, it's amplified even further when reflected on your about page. Harry's summarise who they are, who they're for and why they do what they do on their about page. Their copy does more than assure visitors they're in the right place, it reminds them that the founders are people too. They have countered a similar problem that the visitor has and decided to do something about it. To paraphrase Simon Hello Simon To paraphrase Simon Why is it tricky to say Simon all of a sudden? To paraphrase Simon Sinek, informing, educating and influencing your ideal buyer doesn't come from what you do, it comes from why you do it. And there's no better way to do that than to tell a story. Our third e-commerce copywriting principle is to write magnetic headlines. If you worked in marketing for a long time, you've probably heard of David Ogilvy, and rightfully so. Not only is he known as one of the greatest advertisers of all times, he's also known for prioritising his headlines above anything else he wrote. In fact, Ogilvy was famous for writing 20 headlines for each ad he wrote for this very reason. Now, you don't have to emulate Ogilvy, though it might help. 
but you do need to think about what you're trying to communicate in your product description headlines. According to Copyblogger, eight out of 10 people will read your headline copy, but only two out of 10 will read the rest. And those who do have an attention span of eight seconds. Writing great headlines takes years to master, but there are a few things you can do to capture the visitor's attention. One way to do that is to incorporate one or more of the five used in your headline writing. Here's a brief overview. First, be unique. If you want to rise above the fray in today's noisy online marketplace, you need to differentiate yourself from your competitors. And there's no better way than having a unique angle or value proposition in your headline. Take Firebox, for example. They're funny, unique, and attract a ton of free press because of their unique headlines. It's important to mention here that Firebox copy is consistent with their voice. They know exactly who their market is and who they're writing for, and by their own admission, who they're not for. This is why knowing who you're writing for is crucial. The greater your understanding of your audience, the more you can differentiate yourself with your copy. Next, be ultra specific. So look, being specific is a key element of writing magnetic headlines. And although it can pertain to numbers, it's most effective when it demonstrates who your brand is for. 53 specifies exactly who their ideal buyer is in their headline. Spoiler alert, it's everyone. Visitors need to know immediately whether they're in the right place and whether what you're offering is relevant to their needs and interests. And if they know they are, they're more likely to read your product copy and hopefully make a purchase. Then your headline needs to be urgent. You probably already know urgency increases e-commerce conversions. Why? Because it forces consumers to make a decision. The fear of missing out or FOMO is a real concern for most people and the science proves it. Sockbox use urgency in their headline to nudge prospects off the fence and make a purchase before the month's shipment goes out. You don't always have to rely on urgency to move potential buyers to action, but it might help. Finally, your headlines needs to be useful. In a study of 7,000 New York Times articles, Jonah Berger found useful content is more likely to go viral. Makes sense, right? The more information a prospect has, the easier it is to decide to buy. It's no surprise then that many e-tailers focus on useful headlines for their product descriptions. Crate and Barrel write helpful headlines by asking the visitor which lighting fixture best meets their preference. When you combine one or more of the four used, your headlines will attract attention and your reader will naturally move on and read your product copy. Once you've written a magnetic headline, you need to use adjectives sparingly and verbs frequently. If you're anything like me, your high school creative writing assignments can be summarized by one recurring remark. Needs more adjectives. But we're not writing to entertain, we're writing to sell. And that means using fewer adjectives and more verbs. In an analysis of college applications, Dee Leopold, who is the Managing Director of Admissions for Howard Business School, found applications that included verbs were more likely to be accepted than those that favoured adjectives. Similarly, when writing product copy, verbs outperform adjectives because they help move the reader on to the desired result. If you insist on including adjectives in your copy, you need to make them count. One way to do that is to include sensory adjectives in your copy. When combined with storytelling, sensory adjectives help the reader visualize what they're reading about and encouraging them to invest in the product further. Blue Apron rely on sensory adjectives like juicy and flavorful to entice readers to try their menus. As you can probably imagine, future pacing the desired result can evoke strong emotions in the reader but emotion on its own isn't enough to motivate the reader to take action. You need to lead them by the hand and take them exactly where they should go. And there's no better way to do that than in your call to action. While having a to cart copy is a no-brainer for most e-tailers, there's no harm in having a CTA in your product description too. 
Scout box outline exactly what they want the visitors to do in the product descriptions step by step. The more instruction you give the reader, the easier it is for them to know what to do and the faster you can turn casual visitors into paying customers. Our fifth and final e-commerce copywriting principle is to focus on benefits over features. It's a classic scene. You're interviewing for a job and the employer utters four words candidates pray they won't hear. Sell me this pen. If it's happened to you, chances are one of the two things happen next. You explain the pen's features and what it does, its color, its weight, etc. Or you outline the benefits of owning the pen, specifically how it would improve the owner's life. The truth is, while it's tempting to wax on about a product's ins and outs, most people don't care about what your product is or does. Rather, they care about how and what you're offering can help them bridge the gap between where they are now and where they want to be. A good rule of thumb to follow when writing product descriptions then is to tie a benefit to every feature you write. Intelligent Change are a good example of a company who focus on the after effect of buying their flagship product, the five minute journal. There's no mention of the material the journal's made from or the paper it's printed on. All that matters is how it will improve the buyer's life. Depending on your page's layout, benefits can be written in the copy itself, like above, or used in bullet points. If it's the latter, your bullets will often be organized using an information hierarchy, with the most persuasive bullets at the top and bottom with general benefits in between. TFAL illustrates this perfectly with their non-stick frying pan. They begin with the most important benefit, knowing that's what the reader will read first. When you combine best practices such as playful humour, brand storytelling and benefit-driven copy, your product description will evoke more emotion in your ideal buyer and your bottom line will reflect it. So, did you learn something new today from today's video? Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. If you want exclusive e-commerce strategies that we only share with subscribers, head over to sleeknote.com and sign up for a newsletter for free. Now I want to turn it over to you. Which of the copywriting principles are you going to use from this video? Are you going to harness the power of brand storytelling or are you going to write magnetic headlines? Either way, let me know by leaving a comment below right now.